after studying this module you shall be able to learn the objectives and need of fema understand the provisions capital and current account transactions compare fema and fera and identify the industries which are still under the licensing act we shall now be talking about the foreign exchange and how foreign exchange needs to be regulated and what are the policies in relation to foreign exchange when a business enterprise imports goods from other countries or exports its products to other countries or uh, in turn may be making investments abroad it deals in foreign exchange the reason is very simple that the world over any form of trade whether import or export or any form of finance such as investment or credit has to be done only in terms of foreign exchange what does this mean this means that domestic currencies like the rupee are not accepted generally accepted in the world for settlement of payments and here comes the problem the problem is that there are only certain hard currencies which are actually accepted the world over and therefore any domestic currency has to be converted into a foreign currency such as dollar euro or pound before any transaction can take place in terms of either export import or investment and so on so therefore foreign currencies are exchanged in foreign exchange markets and uh, therefore foreign currency would include all the forms in which such foreign currency is uh, you know re received and also stored that is that foreign exchange can be stored as deposits can be lent out as credit and could be reflected in the balance of payments of any country moreover for the purposes of tourism and travel people require to spend in foreign exchange and therefore drafts travelers checks letters of credit which are used for financing trade bills of exchange and such other instruments all have to be prepared and exchanged only in foreign currency denominations so therefore all kinds of exchange and payment have to be made in foreign currency terms similarly there are other instruments such as drafts travelers checks and so on so all of these are necessarily drawn by banks and institutions or could be drawn by individuals who are outside india but are payable in the domestic currency in india all transactions that include foreign exchange or are based on foreign exchange were earlier regulated by the foreign exchange regulation act or what is called fera which was enacted in 1973 now in the light of the recent well not so recent but 1991 onwards when india became liberalized so in the light of the economic reforms that took place in 1991 in this liberalized scenario this restrictive policy called fera had to be replaced by a new act 
Therefore, we now have something called Foreign Exchange Management Act, FEMA. So, FEMA has replaced FERA. FERA was established in 1973 and FEMA was established in 1999. FEMA is an act of the parliament is comes to being by an act of the parliament and it is meant to consolidate and amend the law regarding the uh, use of foreign exchange and it is done this act has been has come uh, to be uh, with the objective of facilitating external trade and payments and for promoting an orderly development and maintenance of the foreign exchange market. What we are aware is that after liberalization all markets have opened up and the foreign exchange market is no exception. So, it was not possible to continue with a restrictive law like the FERA and it was felt that we needed a more progressive law which is in keeping with the market conditions which is able to regulate a market in terms of its being a free market. Of course, there are some restrictions even now on the uh, foreign exchange markets, but it is not as though that uh, there are some kinds of absolute restrictions like quotas and so on. And this is of course related to another policy which is known as convertibility. We do not have the time and space to speak about that here. But coming back to the question of the new act which is called FEMA, it came into uh, effect from January 2000 which is applicable as a whole to the entire country, to all branches, offices and agencies outside India which are owned and controlled by people who are residents of India. We shall now discuss the various objectives and need for FEMA. The main objective of FERA was to conserve and for the proper utilization of foreign exchange resources of the country. It also sought to control certain aspects of the conduct of business outside the country by Indian companies and in India by foreign companies. It was considered a draconian legislation which meant that its violation would lead to imprisonment and the payment of heavy fines. It had many restrictive clauses which deterred foreign investment. After the changed scenario of economic reforms since 1991, some amendments were made in FERA in 1993. There was a lot of pressure from those dealing in foreign exchange to modify these regulations and FEMA was enacted in 1999 which became operational in January 2000. Broadly, the objectives of FEMA are to facilitate external trade and payments and to promote the orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange market. The act has assigned an important role to Reserve Bank of India in the administration of FEMA. The rules, regulations and norms pertaining to several sections of the Act are laid down by the Reserve Bank of India in consultation with the central government. We shall now throw some light on the provisions, current and capital account transactions. 
Restrictions in Dealing with Foreign Exchange Section 3 of FEMA permits only authorized persons to deal in foreign exchange or foreign securities. Such an authorized person under the Act means an authorized dealer, money changer, offshore banking unit or any other person for the time being authorized by the Reserve Bank. However, no person shall deal in or transfer any foreign exchange or foreign securities to any person not being an authorized person. No person shall make any payment to or for the credit of any person resident outside India in any manner. Further, no person shall receive otherwise through an authorized person any payment by order or on behalf of any person resident outside India in any manner. And finally, no person shall enter into any financial transaction in India as consideration for or in association with acquisition or creation or transfer of a right to acquire any asset outside India by any person is in resident in India which acquire, hold or own or possess or transfer any foreign exchange, foreign security or any immovable property situated outside India holding foreign exchange. Section 4 Save as otherwise provided in this Act, no person resident in India shall acquire, hold, own, possess or transfer any foreign exchange, foreign security or any immovable property situated outside India. The Act deals with two types of foreign exchange transactions, current account transactions and capital account transactions. Current account transactions. The Act defines the term current account transactions as a transaction other than capital account transaction and without prejudice to the generality of the foregoing such transaction includes payments due in connection with foreign trade, other current business, services and short-term banking and credit facilities in the ordinary course of business. Payment due as interest on loans and net income from investments. Remittances for living expenses of parents, spouse and children residing abroad and expenses in connection with foreign travel, education and medical care of parents, spouse and children. As a general rule, any person may sell or draw foreign exchange if such sale or drawal is a current account transaction. Under the Act, central government may, in public interest and in consultation with the Reserve Bank, impose such reasonable restrictions for current account transactions as may be prescribed. We shall now discuss the capital account transactions. Capital account transaction is defined as a transaction which alters the asset or assets or liabilities including contingent liabilities outside India of persons resident in India. In other words, it includes those transactions which are undertaken by a resident of India such that his or her assets or liabilities 
outside India are altered, either increased or decreased. For example, a resident of India acquires an immobile property outside India or acquires shares of a foreign company. This way, his or her overseas assets are increased or a resident of India borrows from non-resident through external commercial borrowing. This way, he or she has created a liability outside India, alters the asset or liabilities in India of a person resident outside India. In other words, it includes those transactions which are undertaken by a non-resident such that his her assets or liabilities in India are altered, either increased or decreased. For example, one, a non-resident acquires immovable property in India or acquires shares of an Indian company or invests in a wholly owned subsidiary or a joint venture with a resident Indian. This way his or her assets in India are increased. Or two, a non-resident borrows from India Housing Finance Institute for acquiring a house in India. This way he she has created a liability in India. The Act also contains a list of some of the most common capital account transactions such as transfer of or issue of any foreign security by a person resident in India, transfer or issue of any security by a person resident outside India, transfer or issue of any security or foreign security by a branch office or agency in India of a person resident outside India. Any borrowing or lending in rupees in whatever form or by whatever name called. Any borrowing or lending in rupo rupees in whatever form or by whatever name called between a person resident in India and a person resident outside India. Deposits between persons resident in India and persons resident outside India. Export, import or holding of currency or currency notes. Transfer of immovable property outside India other than a lease not exceeding 5 years by a person resident in India. Acquisition or transfer of immovable property in India other than a lease not exceeding 5 years by a person resident outside India. Giving a guarantee or surety in respect of any debt obligation or other liability incurred a by a person resident in India and owned owed to a person resident outside India or b by a person resident outside India. The Act has empowered the Reserve Bank of India to specify in consultation with the central government the permissible capital account transactions and the limits up to which foreign exchange may be drawn for such transactions. But it shall not impose any restriction on the drawal of foreign exchange for payments due on account of amortization of loans or for the depreciation of direct investment in the ordinary course of business. We shall now throw some light on export of goods and services. Section 7 of Chapter 2 1. Every exporter of goods shall a. Furnish to the Reserve Bank or such other authority a declaration in such a form 
and in such a manner as may be specified containing true and correct material particulars including the amount representing the full value of export or if the full value of export of goods is not ascertainable at the time of export the value which the exporter having regard to the prevailing market conditions expects to receive on the sale of goods in a market outside india b furnish to the reserve bank of india such other information as may be required by the reserve bank for the purpose of ensuring the realization of export proceeds by such an exporter 2 the reserve bank may for the purpose of ensuring that the full export value of the goods or such reduced value of goods as the reserve bank determines having regard to the prevailing market conditions is received without any delay direct any exporter to comply with such requirements as it deems fit 3 every exporter of services shall furnish to the reserve bank or such other authorities a declaration in such form and in such a manner as may be specified containing the true and correct material particulars in relation to payment for such services we shall now throw some light on the realization and repatriation of foreign exchange section 8 save as otherwise provided in this act where any amount of foreign exchange is due or has accrued to any person resident in india any person shall take all responsible steps to realize and repatriate to india such foreign exchange within such a period and in such a manner as may be specified by reserve bank of india let us move on to the discussion of various exemptions from realization and repatriation in certain cases the provisions of section 4 and 8 shall not apply to the following namely a possession of foreign currency or foreign coins by any person up to a limit as reserve bank may specify b foreign currency account held or operated by such persons or a class of persons and the limit up to which the reserve bank may specify c foreign exchange acquired or required received before the 8th of july 1947 or any income arising or accruing thereon which is held outside india by any person in pursuance of a general or special permission granted by reserve bank foreign exchange held by a person resident in india up to such a limit as reserve bank may specify if such foreign exchange was acquired by way of gift or inheritance from a person referred to in clause c including any income arising therefrom e foreign exchange acquired from employment business trade or vocation services or honorarium gifts inheritances or any other legitimate means up to such certain limit as reserve bank may specify and f such other receipts in foreign exchange as the reserve bank may specify we shall now study contraventions and penalties section 13 if any person contravenes any provision of this act or contravenes any rule regulation notification direction or order issued in exercise of the powers under this act 
or contravenes any condition subject to which an authorization is issued by the reserve bank he shall upon adjudication be liable to a penalty up to thrice the sum involved in such contravention where such amount is quantifiable or up to 2 lakh rupees where the amount is not quantifiable and where such contravention is a continuing one further penalty which may extend to 5000 rupees for every day after the first day during which the contribution continues if he fails to pay the fine within 90 days from the date of the notice served after the formalities of show cause notice and personal hearing he will be liable for civil imprisonment after serving of a warrant of arrest the new licensing policy prior to the industrial policy announced in july 1991 licensing was governed by the industrial development and regulation act 1951 the licensing was meant to help achieve some of the objectives of economic policy such as designed pattern of industrial dispersal encouraging new entrepreneurs protection and development of small scale sector regulation of foreign capital and technology and so on industrial policy 1991 has abolished industrial licensing except for certain industries relating to security and strategic considerations and of environmental importance projects were exempted from licensing on the basis of the level of investment the limit was revised upwards periodically list of industries with compulsory licensing Industrial licensing is compulsory for the following industries large and medium industries items reserved for small scale industries all industries all items of electronics aerospace and defense equipment whether specifically mentioned or not in this list all items related to the production or use of atomic energy including the carrying out of any process preparatory or ancillary to such production or use under the atomic energy act 1962 comprehensive list for which industrial licensing is compulsory coal and lignite petroleum other than crude and its distillation products distillation and brewing of alcoholic drinks sugar animal fats and oils partly or wholly hydrogenated cigars and cigarettes of tobacco and manufactured tobacco substitutes asbestos and asbestos based products plywood de- decorative veneers and other wood based products such as particle board medium density fiber board and black board raw hides and skins leather chamois and patent leather tanned or dressed fur skins motor cars paper and newsprint except baggage based units that is except units based on minimum 75% pulp form agricultural residue bags and other non conventional raw materials electronic 
aerospace and defense equipment all types of explosives including detonating fuses safety fuses gunpowder nitrocellulose and matches as well as hazardous chemicals drugs and pharmaceuticals according to drug policy entertainment electronics vcrs color tvs cd players tape recorders white goods that is domestic refrigerators domestic dishwashing machines programmable dishwashing machines microwave ovens and air conditioners we shall now recapitulate what we have learned so far earlier all transactions that included foreign exchange were regulated by the foreign exchange regulation act 1973 that is fera in the light of economic reforms liberalization and the emergence of wto uh, world trade organization uh, fera became redundant and it was not gelling with the notion of liberalized open free markets so therefore it was replaced by a new act called the uh, foreign exchange management act 1999 which is fema this is more about fema was more about facilitating and managing foreign trade and foreign exchange markets the objective of fema was to facilitate external trade and to facilitate payments to promote the orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange markets and the act was assigned an important role to the reserve bank of india and the reserve bank of india which was a custodian of foreign exchange reserves was given the role of administering the fema there are provisions in fema that permit only authorized persons to deal in foreign exchange or foreign securities no person resident in india uh, is allowed to acquire hold own or possess or transfer any foreign exchange foreign security or any immovable property situated outside india the act defines the term capital account and current account transactions and adopts two golden rules regarding it all current account transactions are permitted unless otherwise prohibited that means that there are some restrictions but very few restrictions on current account transactions all capital account transactions are prohibited unless otherwise permitted that means we have current account convertibility but we do not have capital account convertibility if any person contravenes any provision of this act or contravenes any rule or regulation or order he or she shall be liable to a penalty about to which extends to around 3 times up to 3 times the sum involved uh, in such contravention uh, contravention whereas if such a amount is quantifiable then it could be 3 times or up to 2 lakh rupees where the amount is not quantifiable and where such contraven- contravention is a continuing one that means there are repeated offenses further penalty which may extend to 5000 rupees for every day per day after the first day during which the contravention had occurred will continue to be levied prior to the industrial policy announcement of 9 july 1991 licensing was governed by the industrial development and regulation act 1951 this act was abolished and industrial licensing except for the industries relating to security strategic considerations and of environmental importance 